Hi, I'm Stacy. Welcome to the kitchen of my old Kentucky home. Today on Bourbon and Biscuits, we're going to be celebrating Louisville's deep Irish heritage. I'm going to be making some fried cabbage Kentucky style, and Jessica's going to be doing a bourbon cocktail with a Celtic twist. Let's get started. For our Kentucky fried cabbage, here's what we'll need. One head of cabbage, one cup of chopped onion, one cup chicken or beef stock, four tablespoons bacon grease, and one teaspoon of crushed red pepper. Well, believe it or not, Fried cabbage was one of my most requested side dishes when I was a young girl. And I can tell you that both of my grandmothers just knew how to knock it out of the park. It's such a simple dish to prepare, so let's get started. Just got our basic head of cabbage. You know, sometimes at the store they've already got all these outer leaves taken off. I've already rinsed this, by the way. So we just kind of want to break it down to that real tight and get all the uh, colored, discolored leaves off this nice green part. I'm just going to cut off the tough end. And then I like to, when I'm chopping my cabbage, go on and just break it up into two first. Just simply chopping it up. You can also use a food processor for this if that's easier for you. And it really doesn't matter how big of a dice you want to do. You can kind of do like a medium dice. You can do it smaller. You can do it more of, more of a rough cut. So get those out of my way since I don't have this super large cutting board here. For this recipe, you also want to use, I said for the recipe, a, a cup of, of chopped onion. I went on and chopped that up. You can also just use whatever results out of a, at a basic medium sized onion. And that's really all it is. The cabbage, the onion, and the bacon grease. And then fried is a bit of a, a misnomer. Next thing we're gonna do is put bacon grease in the bottom of the dish and kind of whirl the cabbage and onion around. And then we're really gonna more braise it when we add that stock to it. Okay, so those are cabbage. Next thing, if you've got a cast iron uh, Dutch oven, that's really the best to use. You could always just use your um, big cast iron skillet that you would fry a chicken in if you have a lid for it. I have a, a nice locker say that the lid fits tightly, but it is also cast iron, so we're gonna use that. Next thing we're going to do, you know, I've always got my bacon grease in a jar in the fridge. So I just took four tablespoons of that out and I've got to replenish it. I've got to fry up some bacon. It's nice to always have that on hand. So now I'm just going to take this to the stove, melt it and add our vegetables. We are at the stove. Our bacon grease has melted. I've got it on a medium high heat and we're going to add this cup of chopped onion. I like to mix those around by themselves for just a second. Get them all nice and coated. Now we'll add our cabbage. We're gonna season it. I didn't list this in the ingredients, but surely you have salt and pepper on hand. So we're just going to season it with some fresh ground black pepper, totally to your own taste. And some salt. Now go on and add our crushed red pepper. If you wanted to skip this, if you don't like it too spicy, that'd be okay. We're kind of a spicy family in the Yates household. You could also substitute some fine powdered cayenne or hot sauce. Okay, I think that's nice and coated. Now we're going to take that chicken stock and we're remix it just a little bit. Just pour it over the greens. Give that another stir. Then kind of like you're making rice, I'm going to bring this to what I hear um, a nice rolling boil in there and then I'm going to 
take down the heat just a little bit and simmer it for about a half an hour, 45 minutes. So while we wait for our cabbage to cook down, let's watch Jessica make an Irish inspired cocktail. Today I'm making a cocktail called the Luck of the Kentucky Irish. So a more classic version of this cocktail that you might see at a St. Patrick's Day party would have Irish whiskey along with Bailey's Irish cream and creme de menthe. But of course we're using Kentucky bourbon. And I'm actually using a Maker's Mark bourbon today because I've got a little bit of a fun fact for you. So the Samuels family who created Maker's Mark opted to leave the E out of whiskey, which is not normal for a bourbon whiskey. And they did this as an ode to their Scottish Irish heritage. So let's get started here. We're gonna use two ounces of bourbon and we're gonna pour all of our ingredients into a cocktail shaker with ice. We're gonna do one ounce of the Bailey's Irish Cream. If you really wanted to kind of Kentucky this up, you could use a, a bourbon cream like Buffalo Trace. And then we're gonna do half an ounce of the creme de menthe. We're gonna give this all a good shake here. Uh, anytime I make a cocktail that is kind of a cream-based, I like to shake it in the shaker with ice here because it's gonna kind of aerate the cream, give it a nice kind of fluffy texture, and you don't wanna add ice to your creamy cocktails and water it down because that would just be kind of weird. All right, that feels very nice and chilled. Let's see if I can get this top off here. There we go. This also has a nice festive green color to it. So we're gonna strain this into a martini glass. We're gonna get a little wild with our garnish today. This is a bit more of a dessert cocktail, so we're going sweet here. Gonna garnish it with whipped cream. And then you can either do um, chocolate shavings if you have a piece of chocolate at home, and then take a vegetable peeler, and just along the edge here, you can create kind of small curls with the vegetable peeler there. I think that's kind of a fun technique. Or if you happen to have chocolate syrup at home, you could drizzle that on top. So we're just gonna do both. And you kind of get creative with your patterns there. All right, that's all there is to it. This is the luck of the Kentucky Irish. So I don't have a lot of Irish heritage in my family, but personal traditions, I go every year to the St. Patrick's Day Parade, and I really enjoy all of our Irish bars and restaurants in town. So I know there is a lot of rich heritage, but tell me a little more about it. Well, of course you know I would know I do things, know, right? yes. Because <laughs> history, but um, so, I'm not of Irish descent, mm -hmm. but Italian and then on the country, but I'm married into the family uh, that is, the, um, not the Yateses, but the Tackets, my mother-in-law. Um, they were part of that second wave immigration to the United States from the potato famine that a lot of people know about mm -hmm. from the 1840s. There was actually, though, um, an or original wave uh, where we get the whiskey making techniques um, in the 18th century. Uh, Lucky that for that. Was, right, the, <laughs> the Irish and the, the Scotch-Irish. Mm -hmm. And so you go back to, the, you still see this in the, the parades and the bars that are so prevalently talked about. Two neighborhoods um, that were a huge concentration of those Irish Catholics, the Limerick neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And let me guess, Irish Hill. Oh, Irish Hill, <laughs> yes. Um, and you see that, just the heritage in Louisville, there's so many Irish Catholics mm -hmm. um, still. Uh, they had their uh, last Irish parade in 1918, so over a hundred years ago, that had been an annual thing from those those wave of immigrants. And then sometime in about the 60s, as people were really celebrating their, their cultural heritage, it came back. Um, they started a new order of the Ancient Hibernians, which is a popular Irish club, and they brought back that St. Patrick's Day parade yeah. that you uh, know and love. So uh, a long heritage of it and still being celebrated today. Yeah. What's your favorite Irish bar? Uh, I really love O'Shea's. The Highlands location has one of the best patios in town. And then the Whiskey Row one. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've got to know mine. 
Well, since it's in the neighborhood, I guess in the Irish Rover. It is. It is. Love that place. <laughs> so we go there on Christmas Eve, even though, like I said, I'm Italian. We go there on Christmas Eve for lunch. Well, it's so. a fun tradition. A very fun tradition. So this is a new tradition for me. I'm going to introduce this to, to my brother-in-law, mm-hmm. uh, who's big into his, his Irish heritage. I think he's going to really like this. It's very festive great dessert cocktail and you know I think I'm just gonna have to adopt your grandma's cabbage recipe for my own yeah simple but just really delicious my brother didn't like cabbage growing up I think you know a lot of kids may not Mm -hmm. but I loved it and I forgot how much I liked making it so I'm build that back into my repertoire at home too well that's fantastic and thank you all for joining us and we'll see you next time on bourbon and biscuits cheers